Hello, and welcome to our video on the addition of water or alcohols to alkenes. For this section, we're talking about how alkenes can be used as nucleophiles to attack electrophiles. So we're going to continue on in that vein. So as a reminder, previously we talked about the addition of HX to a double bond. For this reaction, there's a couple things we need to remember. The first is that um, it's a Markovnikov addition, which means that for the double bond, we know that the X, which is a halogen, is going to be on the more substituted carbon of the double bond. The other thing we know is that it makes a carbocation as part of the mechanism. Because it has a carbocation, that means that rearrangement can occur. So those are all things we want to remember going forward for similar reactions. So that was reaction one of this section. We're going to do reaction types two and three today. We're going to talk about the addition of um, water with an acid, so that can be abbreviated H3O+. And we're also going to talk about the addition of alcohols with an acid catalyst. So we'll see that these are really similar to HX. Then after this, we're going to talk about some other reactions. And these reactions are a little bit different. They don't have a carbocation, and we're going to get some differences in whether or not they can rearrange and also in the regiochemistry. So whether or not the product is Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov. So the first reaction we'll talk about in this video is the acid catalyzed hydration of an alkene. So the first thing we want to mention is that hydration is just adding water. So to this reaction, we're adding water because we're adding an H on one side of the double bond and an OH on the other side. So you can see that in the product. So of course, you don't have to show that, so we can just erase that part for now. Um, the acid catalyst is generally going to be a strong acid that doesn't have a nucleophile. So you wouldn't want to use like HCl because you might get the product of HCl with the double bond. So instead we'll use catalytic um, sulfuric acid. It tends to be the most commonly used, so we'll just put that. That's what the cat means. It means it's a catalyst, so it'll react. But then it will also be reformed at the end, so you only need like a drop of the acid versus a whole lot of the water. One more thing I want to mention before we get into the details of the reaction is that um, one way you can write the reaction is this, where you have the catalyst of the acid on the top, and on the bottom is the solvent, which is water, but that's also the nucleophile in this case. Um, but some people will write it as H3O+, plus because if you add water and sulfuric acid together, that would be the product. You would get H3O+. Plus. So it's kind of like an abbreviation. It's a shorter version. So you could write either version in a box question or on an exam, um, but I tend to write it this way, so just so you know. So with that said, let's look at the mechanism for this reaction. So as I said, it's going to be very similar to an HX mechanism. So we're going to have a similar idea. So the very first thing that's going to happen is our nucleophile is going to attack the H+. So our nucleophile is going to be the double bond. So that's here. And it's going to attack an H+. The H+, comes from the acid, but you don't have to draw the whole acid out. You can just write H+, because it is a strong acid that will dissociate in the water. Okay. So we've got that. So what product would that make? Right, it's going to make the intermediate, which is a carbocation. And we know to make the best carbocation, we're going to put the positive on the more substituted carbon. And that's why I'm going to put the positive here. Good? Okay. So then when I get to this point, I always say, can it rearrange? But this particular example cannot, right? Because if it rearranged, it would be rearranging to a primary, which is not going to be more helpful. Okay, so good. All right, so once I've got my carbocation, it's the most stable version I can have, then I'm going to have the nucleophile attack. So what would be our nucleophile to form the product that's shown? Right? It's going to be the OH. So that's going to come from the water. So that's going to be our nucleophile. So we're going to draw a lone pair there. That attacks the carbon with the positive charge. And then we form that bond. So that would make this. All right, and then we have one more step. So we have charge on our oxygen. So what do we need to do? Right, it's just going to be an acid-base reaction, right? So what can come get that um, extra hydrogen? We're probably going to use the nucleophile, right? That's the strongest base that we have in solution. HSO4 is not a strong enough base to pick that proton back up. So use water to be the base and come get that hydrogen, and then you get the product. All right, so before we move on, let's summarize. So this reaction is regiospecific, right? meaning there's a preference where the OH goes. You don't get a product where it's on carbon 1. It's only going to show up on carbon 2. So the regiospecificity in this case is going to be our Markovnikov product, right? So it is regiospecific and it's Markovnikov. Can this reaction rearrange? Yes, right? Because it has a carbocation. By definition, anything with a carbocation is going to be able to rearrange because it has time to do that, and carbocations are not super stable, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. If not, you can obviously review this or ask me questions. All right, but let's go ahead and go forward. 
So here we have another example of an acid catalyzed hydration. So for this one, what would our product look like? So if I draw the carbons out over here, what's going to happen? We're actually going to get a slightly different product, right? So it would look like this. And what's different about this? Right, the carbons have moved around. So that means that we have a rearrangement. So I just wanted to show an example of a reaction with rearrangement. So let's go through the mechanism and show what that looks like, just to make sure we're clear. All right, so the first step's going to be the same as the other one, right? Our nucleophile is going to attack the H+, so that's going to be our double bond. So draw your H+, and then that attacks. And then we're going to draw our carbocation, right? So where is the positive charge going to be? Is it going to be on carbon 3 or carbon 4? Right, it'll be on carbon 3. Very good. All right, so that's the more stable carbocation, but we also know that secondary carbocations can rearrange. So if we look right next to there, on one side's a primary, so it's not going to go that way. On the other side is a quaternary carbon, so it's got four carbons attached. So that means that that can definitely rearrange. So we're going to move one of the carbons in that case. So I'm going to draw that next, so the carbon from the bond to the carbon with the positive charge. Perfect. All right, so then we draw our new carbocation. So what kind of carbocation are we going to have? Right, so we're going to have a tertiary carbocation. It's a more stable carbocation. That's why it rearranged. So then I would draw this structure that matches the structure on top. And then I've got my positive charge, and it's going to get attacked by the nucleophile. That's the next step. So our nucleophile is water, right, water. So draw the lone pair, and that attacks the carbon with the tertiary carbocation now. And then the last step is going to be the same, an acid-base step. So it looks like this, and the water comes and gets the hydrogen. Okay, great. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, if you have questions, just let me know. All right, so that covers that reaction. We also have another reaction we said we were going to talk about. So if we look at this reaction, what's different about it versus the last one? All right, so we've got the same nucleophile, right? We're starting with the double bond. That's going to be the same for all this whole section. And we still got acid, but our nucleophile is different for this one, right? It's very similar. It's got an O, so we're going to be able to do it the same way. It's just got carbons on it, so that's the only difference. So it's going to give us a different product. So the product that you get for this one, instead of being an alcohol, is going to be an ether, right? The product over here is an ether. Okay, so let's talk about the mechanism of this one. So first we're going to have the nucleophile attack. What do you think it's going to attack? Right, it's going to be the acid again, because it's acid catalyzed. So that's going to attack the H+, and then we're going to get our product. So what does that product look like? Right, it's going to be a positive charge on this carbon, because that's the more substituted. That's the best um, carbocation we can have. All right, and then um, we're going to have, once we get the carbocation, the nucleophile can attack. So what nucleophile would attack to make the product? Right, that's the new bond right here, right? So we're going to use that alcohol. So the nucleophile is going to attack the carbon with the carbocation, like that. So we'll draw that product. And then the last step's an acid base. So what's going to come get that hydrogen? Just another nucleophile, exactly. So basically, if you see, it's almost exactly the same, except for there's carbons attached to the O instead of just having two hydrogens, right, like water does. So to finish up with this reaction, let's check and make sure we understand the details. So is this reaction regioselective or regiospecific? Yes, right, it's Markovnikov addition, so that's normal. Um, can it rearrange? Yes, right, because it has a carbocation. It's basically just like the water version in those details. The only difference is those extra carbons on the nucleophile, but they don't change how it works. So now hopefully we understand how the reaction works and the details. Let's just do a few more examples before we finish up. So understanding the reactions is part of it, but we also want to make sure that we can predict the products or the reactants or whatever else we need to, right? So let's look at these few box questions. All right, so I'll give you a minute to write those down. Just pause the video and write them down. And then let's try the first one and see how that goes. Okay. Hopefully now you've tried the first one. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw the carbons, right? Um, in this case, it's not going to rearrange. Um, generally for box questions, I'll like do like a little shortcut mechanism. So I might draw just the carbocation for that. So if I draw the carbocation, it would look like this. Right, that's tertiary carbocation. So then the product would be with the with the OH, right? Because it's got water. So the product's gonna be there. Okay? So pause the video and try number two and number three and see how those go. Okay? So hopefully for number two, you got this one, right? In this case, it is Markovnikov, but it doesn't really matter because the carbocation could be in either spot. 
right? Because both of those carbocations are secondary, so it doesn't really matter which one you get. And then the nucleophile would attack that carbocation to give you the product. So again, either of the products is fine. If you put it on the top or the bottom, it's the same molecule. And then for, how about for the last one? Right, so for this one, the first carbocation would look like this, but then it can rearrange, right? So if it goes here, then it can rearrange to make a tertiary carbocation, which is here. And that means that's probably going to be the major product is going to be the oxygen on that carbon. Okay? I went ahead and redo the product on the right with the carbon mapping so you can make sure everything matches up. So just double check that you have the right number of carbons on that one. So good. So hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, of course, you can always email me or talk to me in class and either of those options are fine. And just let me know. All right, so just a reminder of where we're at in this section. It's a short section, and we want to make sure we're keeping up with our reaction list. So you should have three reactions so far, and then we're going to do two more in the next class period. So we should have the reaction of the addition of HX, that's HCl or HBr, either example is fine. Um, also the addition of H3O+, which is the same as saying H2SO4 and water. The addition of alcohol um, to double bond. So that's what we've got so far. Then the next thing we're going to do is these four and five, so just be ready for those. Make sure you've read for that for class. Those two are a little bit more complicated. So if you have any questions, as always, just let me know. That's going to be all our videos for this section, so make sure you check the activities and can do those, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.